Good evening and welcome to MTV News Update for today, Friday, January 5, 2018. In the news tonight, North LaPenitent's family homeless after fire ripped through their home. Police raids, hotel and strip club, 41 foreign nationals arrested. GNBA hands out six new raid licenses. Royston King unmoved by mounting calls for him to be fired. And in court, a father and son released on $200,000 bail for wounding their in-law. With the details of these and other stories, I am Ashley Scotland. Thank you for joining us. Nicole John begins tonight's newscast by telling you that a strip club in the city was raided early this morning by ranks from the major crimes unit. The police found marijuana and over 40 foreign nationals were taken into custody. Find out more in this Nicole John report. Police swooped down on the hotel and strip club around 4 hours 30 this morning. The hotel and strip club is located on George Street, Working Rust, Georgetown. Reports from persons in the area are that the police came very early and began to evacuate the occupants from the premises. Several suitcases and the personal belongings of the foreign nationals were also removed from the building. One of the workers of the hotel and strip club claimed that the police physically assaulted him. Acting Crime Chief Paul Williams says the raid carried out this morning was based on intelligence. He noted that investigators are still trying to ascertain if there are possible links of trafficking in persons. We've conducted some exercises there. During that exercise, we would have found 41 foreign nationals, some narcotic drugs were seized, some employees, and we are conducting an investigation for the internet matter. Williams added that among the foreign nationals are Cubans, Dominicans, Venezuelans, and Brazilians. Nikhil Jonder reporting for MTV News Update. Two pensioners are left wailing after their North La Penitence house they share with their grandchildren turched early on today. The couple is left with only the clothes on their backs. Kipney Jordan was there and followed this report. Fire engulfed a house at North La Penitence, Georgetown on Friday, January 5, leaving a family of four homeless. When this newscast arrived, the fire service had managed to get the fire under control but was unable to salvage any of the possessions of the owners. Of the entire building, only the outer concrete structure remains. 69-year-old Kenneth Herbert, who recounted the event, stated that his family have resided at the address for over 20 years and he has recently rebuilt his home. Herbert was unable to give an estimated amount of losses he has suffered. The children will wake me, my little girl wake me up. If she called me, call my attention. But it was too late. I heard somebody saying that the kids usually play with them. Uh, well, not when I am home. Not when I am home. Because I make sure that when I'm home, we don't got much thing. I put all the much high. And I make sure I call them to lie down and sleep. Herbert said that when the fire started, he was asleep and was suddenly awakened by the cries of his two grandchildren. He also mentioned that he planned to leave the country next month. However, he lost approximately $1.2 million in cash he had stashed in the pocket of his jacket. No other house was affected by the fire. The origin of the fire is currently unknown and investigations are currently ongoing. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. 
The Ghana National Broadcasting Association has distributed six new radio licenses. Recipients is the owner of Channel 6, Chandra Narayan Sharma, and Kaitro News boss, Glenn Lal. Details from Sandy Ramutar. Six persons were today granted radio licenses. The license is effective from January 5. Among the recipients were Chandra Narayan Sharma and Glenn Lal. And these broadcasters, some of them have applied for primary and other zones, but they met the obligations. They're now fully compliant as of 2016, because 2017 has not, uh, can't deal with that just yet. So these licenses, even though they are giving out now for applications that were in the past, will entitle the holders hereof to broadcast by radio for the year 2018 and onwards. The GNBA will also look at extending the duration of a license from one year and also look at stringent scrutiny measures to monitor broadcasters. This is according to Chairman of the Guyana National Broadcasting Association, Leslie Sobers. The law allows us to grant as many as 10 years on a single license. And uh, we will just have to there for uh, thereafter strengthen our monitoring department to ensure that persons are complying with the regulations. And uh, all that would perhaps need to be done in the ensuing years, depending on how long we give it, is just uh, to stamp it as being uh, valid for that particular year rather than going through this whole process on an annual basis. So we're trying to make things as easy as could be for broadcasters. According to the chairman, licenses for television broadcasters will be granted in the first quarter of the year. However, those broadcasters not in compliance with the requirements are expected to be off year by March of this year. This came on the heels of several broadcasters not in compliance with the requirements who have requested a grace period to do so. The chairman reiterated a call for broadcasters to be compliant with the regulations as illegal broadcasting will not be permitted to continue operations. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Town Clerk Royston King is unmoved by the calls for him to be removed from City Hall as he claims everyone is entitled to express their opinion. Only yesterday, three activists called for King and the City Mayor to be fired due to the allegations of child sexual abuse which allegedly occurred in the compound of City Hall. Details in this Yanis Abrams report. Town Clerk Royston King is unmoved by the recently rekindled calls for him to be removed from his post at City Hall. This comes against the backdrop of a small group of activists calling for him along with Mayor Patricia Chase Green to be sacked. They staged a protest yesterday. Their grouse is with the inaction taken by the duo in relation to the alleged child sexual abuse case which allegedly occurred in the City Constabulary Building. The act was allegedly committed by a city police. King, in his unwavering rhetoric, said it is a person's democratic right to express their opinion on issues. He further stated that, with regards to the alleged sexual molestation case, the accused and witness still remains on administrative leave until the local government commission is finished considering the matter. The recommendations of the council, because the recommendations of the committee was accepted by the council, so then now is the recommendation of the council on the matter, insofar as the administrative aspect uh, is concerned, was sent to the local government service commission by me. The town clerk believes that on the administrative side, it was dealt with thoroughly. And with respect to the criminal aspect of that, that matter, the police is investigating that matter. And I also wish to note that as we speak to date, no charges are being laid against anyone, and I just want to make that clear. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. More news to the head. Do stay tuned. Using state-of-the-art technology and highly trained professionals, let Optic Vision Care assist you with your eye care. Visit any of their four convenient locations at Times Square Mall on Grove Public Road, Helena No. 1, Mahaika.
at the Giftland Mall and our newest location at 350 East Street, North Cummingsburg for added convenience. Their doors are open every day in the Giftland Mall, Monday through Saturday at Grove and East Street, every Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday at Mahaika. Call them today, 266-0126-222-7333 or 227-7744. Our Mohan Supermarket is your one-stop shop for everything you need. Our Mohan Supermarket carries your entire favorite brand name goods, as well as many of the locally produced goods at the lowest prices. Groceries, toiletries, confectionaries, household items, personal care items, fresh meats, all alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages at unbeatable prices. Spend $7,500 and more and receive a free gift while stocks last. Pay your bills at Bill Express, also money transfer at Western Union, all at one convenient location. Visit us today at 36 to 37 New Road, Fridden Hoop, West Coast, Demerara. Telephone numbers 2540334 or 2540666. For delivery, check out Top Notch Taxi right next door, 24 hour service. Telephone numbers 2541324 or 2541325. You're still with News Update. Welcome back. Residents of Armadale and neighboring villages on the west coast of Berbice helped themselves to a quantity of food items. The supplies were left behind by a driver who abandoned the vehicle after it plunged overboard. More from Nikhil Jondo. Milo! You gonna use this, Milo? Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. All right, good. You know what happened with the accident, so do? All right, good, good. Enjoy the Milo, buddy. According to a resident, the accident occurred around midnight last night. The residents told News Update that the driver was speeding along the public road when he lost control of the vehicle. As a result, the car ended up in a nearby canal. Reports are that the driver abandoned the vehicle. Um, he has like two cars or three cars racing. And when it only go wrong, it's by the turn, and you can't take a turn. So, you know, run out the turn. We went to the cinema and ended up calling the vehicle, and then you see some feelings floating in the water. The vehicle was later removed from the canal. Traffic Chief Dion Moore says he is not aware of the accident. He noted that the driver may have fled from the scene to receive medical attention. However, up to press time, the driver could not be found. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Vice Chairman of the National Tushas Council, Lennox Schumann, has stated that Ministerial Advisor Mervyn Williams has ulterior motives to see Minister Sidney Alicock fail at his job. However, the minister himself has laid those allegations to rest. Find out more in the Sashana Gomes Canelis report. Vice Chairman of the National Jewish House Council, Lennox Schumann, had claimed that the advisor to the Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Sidney Alicock, Mervyn Williams, is providing bad advice that will ensure he fails. However, Minister Alicock is refuting that statement. The minister claims Schumann, like anyone else, has the free will to state his opinion. I, I, I am not against him uh, one, having said what he had to say. That's his, that's his opinion. And that's his, that's his take on it. That's okay. his take. He's not the chairman of the NTC. The vice chairman had also claimed that the Hinterland Employment and Youth Service Program, Hayes, is a failure. In response, Minister Ali Cook revealed that it would be ideal for Schumann to bring before him a plan that he sees perfect. Further, when asked whether he will be meeting with the National Tushaus Council regarding recommendations and plans pertaining to the development of indigenous youths and communities, Minister Ali Cook affirmed that such a meeting will be possible once the chairman of the council requests for one. We, we have an NTC, we have a, a ministry, and we have an executive body. When they ask for a meeting, we meet for discussion. So I'll deal, I'll deal with the chairman of the NTC. When he says, we will discuss it. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. 
U.S. oil giant ExxonMobil has discovered another large oil find in the Starbrook block. The quantum of oil has not been released by the company. Here is more. ExxonMobil Corporation today announced positive results from its Range of One exploration well. ExxonMobil said this is a sixth oil discovery of Shurgaina since 2015. In a statement, it noted that the Range of One well discovery adds to previous world-class discoveries at Lisa, Payara, Snook, Lisa Deep and Turbout. Those oil discoveries are estimated to total more than 3.2 billion recoverable oil equivalent barrels. ExxonMobil affiliate ESO Exploration and Production Ghana Limited began drilling that well on November 5, 2017. During the drilling, the company encountered approximately 230 feet of high-quality oil-bearing carbonate reservoir. It noted that the well was safely drilled to 21,161 feet in depth in 8,973 feet of water. According to the president of ExxonMobil Exploration Company, Steve Greenlee, this latest success operating in Guyana's significant water depths illustrates the company's ultra-deep water and carbonate exploration capabilities. He added that this discovery proves a new play concept for the 6.6 .6 million acre Stabrook block and adds further value to ExxonMobil's growing portfolio in Guyana. Following completion of the Range of One well, the Stanakaran drill ship will move to the Pakura Prospect, four miles from the Payara Discovery. Additional exploration drilling is planned on the Starbuck block for 2018, including potential appraisal drilling at the Range of Discovery. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. For husband and wife Raquel and Michael Paul, as the days and months go slowly by, they are becoming more and more frustrated with the alleged unprofessional and disheartening behavior meted out to them by the Child Care and Protection Agency. The couple, while declaring victimization, is also claiming that their children have grown thin and ill. Tashana gomez Canelius has been following this story. Furious and determined to have both her children safe and sound at home again, Raquel Paul earlier on Friday repeatedly stressed how concerned she is over the well-being of her children. The distraught woman explained upon visiting her 10-year-old son on Thursday afternoon at the office of the Child Care and Protection Agency, she completely broke down after observing how thin her son had become. She is worried that her son is not being treated well. According to Paul, when she questioned her son, all he could say is that he wanted to return home with her. Well, it tells me that um, something is wrong with the baby. It tells me that. Something is definitely wrong with my baby. It's either that sores develop, or he's having a fever, or they, he's still having a cold. He had it, the cold on the 20th of December. He had it rattling on his stomach. And it tells me that something has developed. Make they are telling me that they'll schedule a date for me to see the baby. I don't know, but this here, we in for some trouble here. Because I'm gonna protest and I'm going to take them to court. I have to get my children. Yeah, they're saying my home is not healthy because of Mr. Paul. It's not safe. They're saying it's not safe. But I, I still think they need to give Mr. Paul a chance, you know. Anyway, he, he came out. They said, I cannot, I cannot go close to him. I, I stand a distance. And I give the lady that was in charge the parcel. It was um, chocolate, biscuit, and a piece of cake wrapped, wrapped in file and a gift wrap. Anyway, um, I gave them it and I left. And I said, well, Brandon, he started to cry. So I said, be strong, be strong. And I left. I said, I got to go now. And I left. And now yesterday, now they had to tell me that I went there and they threw away the cake because they cannot accept open stuff. And I know that they told me already. And I should have never gone there to take the gifts, the gift and, and the stuff for the little boy. I should have come over there. I said, how am I doing so when this place is closed? You told me y'all are closing off for the holiday. How am I doing that? According to Michael Paul, the situation has really hurt him immensely. Being quite emotional, Michael Paul explained since October 19, he was not allowed to see his eighth-month-old son. 
He said, Daddy, I want your mommy. And then want to send him send me home. Right? And that, that is why you see people say that I am mad. I mean, I know I I feel him for my son. I know what he's going through. See baby don't he he ain't got a sense Baby's still today. small. But Brandon I'm feeling it more. Since yesterday when I come out from the visit there, I couldn't eat nothing. Until now me eat nothing. Because if my son can't eat how oh, how oh, oh, could I? When she does row with me, say, baby, babes, eat. I can't eat and then be satisfied and my son looking like that. I raised up his jersey yesterday, said, try to show missing. He, 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 he had the um, tires with him by use of trouble in school. And I observed a mark, and he, well, he tell me that his play, they went playing in the cupboard door. He ran in the jammy side there, kind of black and blue. <laughs> then she trying for telling me that I, I shouldn't say certain things and I shouldn't talk. I said, oh, I got command, it's my child, I know how he feel. I just want the, the, the president or the, the ministers, whoever in charge, try and look into this more thing because they not me nor my wife. They not in my, my 10 year old. The 11th birthday is uh, 28th of January. The couple, though presently not living together, is adamant that they will do all that is necessary to have their children back. On October 19, child care workers went to the couple's home located at Orinoke Street, Queenstown, and took their children. They deemed the environment abusive. While the couple admitted they had quarrels, they are both committed to safeguard the well-being of their children. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Coming up, retrenched sugar workers plan massive protest for severance pay, and city residents and businesses will pay $200 per barrel of garbage. All across our nation, Guyana, we see it in your lives. The future growing even stronger. Introducing the new Softex Toilet Tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The choice is clear. Two Softex Toilet Tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26 or you can buy a quick bet for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. This is MTV News Update. Thank you for staying tuned. More questions remain as the family of Norbert Lamazon is still seeking to bring closure to the case. No new information has been forthcoming from the Criminal Investigations Department. Take a John who filed this report. Acting Crime Chief Paul Williams could not provide a definitive answer as to the circumstances surrounding the death of Norbert Lamazon. Williams said the police are still treating the incident as an accident. Well, um, as it relates to the post-mortem results, I can't tell you exactly what the results says. I think the crime chief, the traffic chief will be able to maybe tell you about that because it is still being classified as a cause in death by dangerous driving accident. Norbert Lamazon left his place of work just before sunset on November 30. However, the deceased never reached his home 
which was a few streets away. In a video shown to News Update, the deceased walked out of the compound as per normal on any given day he worked. Family members believe that the deceased was not involved in an accident. This newscast was told that days before the alleged accident, a dark-colored car pulled up at the man's workplace and spoke to him. A family member said that was unusual because the deceased would not venture to speak with strangers. The family is appealing to the individual or individuals who took the deceased to the hospital to come forward and identify himself or themselves. They also believe that his death is directly linked to the death of the Richard Ishmael Secondary School teacher Kezia Branch. Branch's body was thrown at the corners of Princess and Louisa Row. One person was charged for that murder. Nikhil Jonda reporting for MTV News Update. Retrenched sugar workers are planning a massive protest against the Guyana Sugar Corporation as they are yet to receive their severance packages. The sugar company cannot facilitate such payments presently. Sandy Ramatar with this story. Sugar workers who received redundancy letters last month are now driven in frustration as their severance packages have not been paid to them. This follows a meeting between the Guyana Agricultural and General Workers Union and workers from Burbeast on January 4. As such, a decision between sugar workers and the union will see them picketing the streets to force the hands of the company to pay the workers. Consider what action they want to take. They are, they are considering about protests, engage in some protests. And they have to fix the date and time. So we are, we are together back from them. Protest for, um, for the payment of the severance money. Our thought is that the government must now be able to provide the money mm. for, the, for, for them, for, for the workers to get their severance pay. The PEEF workers will now be looking to the government to finance their severance as the guy Suko is in debt. The government had assured redundant workers that they will receive payments from their severance in January 2018. The Rose Hall, East Demerara and Skeldon Estates are expected to be closed this year. Sandy Ramudar for MTV's News Update. Come February, city residents and businesses will have to pay City Hall $200 per barrel of garbage. The initial sum is $600 per barrel. However, the council is subsidizing $400. Lashana Gomes Cornelius has more. The town clerk notes feel that the actual cost for collecting one barrel of waste is $600. Of that sum, $400 will be subsidized by the council. Additionally, King highlighted while some corporations and businesses have already been paying for the collection and disposal of their commercial waste, the council is encouraging all other businesses to follow suit. In the meantime, King confirmed that he is in the process of ensuring a special fee is attached for the removal of industrial waste. I am in the process of tidying up a special white paper to ask council to place a special fee on industrial waste. This is important because those who harm our natural environment must adequately compensate the local communities in which they operate whose health and well-being they put at risk. Further, King related since January 1, all businesses are required to have a sanitation certificate and added that so far the initiative has been going well. It is necessary to confirm that our public health, environmental health inspectors have visited and inspected their premises and that they are complying with public health standards and regulations. That they have adequate number of washrooms, for example, and other sanitary facilities, that they have adequate and proper <coughs> ventilation, and that their businesses are in good repair. Obviously, this will attract a small administrative fee, and that we will discuss a little later at the level of the council. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Respiratory patient care will be boosted at the Georgetown Public Hospital. The team of students from the Texas University Respiratory Department will be supporting patient care at the Georgian Public Hospital. 
the students will be attached to the asthma spirometry, emergency and intensive care unit. This follows the lack of respiratory services at the Georgian Public Hospital. The students were exposed to first-hand experience among medical personnel, where they were an exchange of knowledge on different forums. In emergency medicine, we learned the uh, ABCs uh, of a, the medical care for a patient, the airway, breathing, and circulation. And I thought, well, without airway and breathing, nothing else matters. So it's an important career field, and I thought I could make a difference. And uh, that's how I chose it. I got into respiratory therapy because I have asthma, and I don't walk around anywhere without my inhaler. I feel like I didn't get the asthma education that I needed as a child and so I became a respiratory therapist in order to educate every patient that I see with asthma about their different triggers or the different ways that they can manage it because you can live with asthma and live just as everyone else does. You can exercise like they do, you can be outside like they do. They were so good at teaching people how to do like and how to, how to teach them how to use their inhaler and how to manage asthma. They really care about the patient and you can tell that they do. And so I really love that and I appreciate their time for teaching me how to do different things in different ways. Coupled with this, a team of mass communication students also visited the institution to document the experience and feedback. The team is also expected to produce a documentary. Um, we met with him this morning and we talked about um, the different procedures that go into running a hospital um, that's a like a reference, hos a referral hospital. Um, so we learned a lot about that, and that's going to help us better document the work that the respiratory care students are doing. And we and talked to him about um, his hopes for respiratory therapy in this hospital, and um, funding for this hospital, kind of some background information. A medical team is expected to visit the institution once annually to boost patient care at the institution. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. More news ahead. Stay tuned. Introducing a new brand of all-weather fiberglass rocking chairs for complete relaxation. We supply quality, durable, and low-maintenance indoor and outdoor table and chairs for your patio, restaurants, cafeteria, reception area, and much more. So sit back and enjoy quality products from Fibertech with guaranteed factory warranty. Did you know almost one third of deaths in Guyana are heart related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. Make an impression with the finest styles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various styles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our towels are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation. You are tuned to News Update. Welcome back. Pensioners are encouraged to visit the National Insurance Scheme and submit a valid bank account number so that any money payable from NIS will be sent through the bank system. Kipini Jordan filed with this report. During a telephone interview, Public Relations Officer of the National Insurance Scheme, Diane Lewis Baxter, encouraged pensioners to have their bank accounts registered with NIS to receive their pension at the bank. According to Baxter, this system was implemented over four years ago, but only overseas pensioners took advantage of the system. 
Baxter went on to state, as of recent, the number of persons using the banking systems have increased. What we're doing is trying to encourage more of our pensioners to come on board with this system. Okay. Right? Um, one is um, we think about accommodation, security for the funds and all of that, you know? Mm -hmm. So we've been encouraging pensioners to, to have their payments made into their um, bank accounts so that, um, you know, it would be a lot easier for them. This system was implemented to decrease the long lines at the post offices and all NIS locations, Baxter said. She further stated that this system will allow pensioners the opportunity to use the banking services with an ATM card to access their money at any time. What you find was what was happening earlier, mm -hmm. you had, um, especially overseas pensioners, they had, uh, because they're not here and they need the money to be paid somewhere, they had to nominate a rep. But then sometimes you find, you know, you have to go looking after your money. Sometimes it doesn't always go well. So sometimes when you come back to the country, no money is there and, you know, those sort of things. She said, when applying for this service, it is mandatory that the bank account being used is active. Baxter reiterated that pensioners both local and overseas should take advantage of the banking system because it will eliminate the need for a third-party representative, which over the years has caused issues for persons receiving their money. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. Tom Clark Royston King says that the two main solid waste contractors have resumed collection in a city under the existing contract. However, he is trying to have the cost for garbage collection reduced. Here's more. The two main solid waste contractors in the city, Seabourn's Waste Management and Purim Brothers Incorporated, are still working under the existing contract they signed with the city council. Tom Clark Royston King mentioned that, during discussions with the contractors on January 4, a proposal to reduce the cost of garbage collection would be considered. The meeting was characterized by cordiality, mutual respect, and love for city and country. After much discussions and deliberations, the contractors have agreed to resume their services to the city under the existing contract. However, we, both sides, have agreed to relook at current contractual arrangements to see what we can do differently to reduce costs. When asked what is the current cost for garbage collection per day, the town clerk was unable to answer. Chief Executive Officer of Seabond Waste Management, Morris Archer, stated the company is still waiting on the council to withdraw the letter stating that its services were terminated. This action came as the main solid waste contractors suspended their services for several months due to the city council owing millions. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. Stay tuned for regional and international news, Coach Rangnap, as well as the Demar Harbour Bridge schedule. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens available in tinted or clear complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Eh eh, BB is way going with so much Windex for clean windows. All them fancy curtains, it's not even Christmas. Hi girl, mind your own business. I got big plans. But BB, your house don't even have windows. Eh girl, you ain't think I know it ain't got window? Yes, I know it ain't got window. But look, Mokesh promised me that he carried me down by the window factory when he come home it. 
Eccles. It named Beeson. Like you and know nothing, girl. Right now, everybody talking about how Beeson got the strongest windows. Plus, they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind new business instead of you minding me own. Beeson Windows and Doors. Serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office, or commercial building. If it's not one thing, it's another. Last year, we barely avoid this connection for the Christmas. Now, we got to deal with estimated bills. Because I hardly at home, and I left him again open for no thief. Now, come and carry me my phones. Brian, you got to get up to date with the tent. So, GWI released this new app that allows you to read your own meter and send it to them so they won't have to estimate your bills anymore. Plus, this app bought for days, it allows you to report a leak right away just by taking a picture and sending it to them. So Auntie Jane next door could report her leak. What a thing! Bye, you're gonna have to show me how to use this app. After installation, open the GWI customer app. Sign up with your GWI account information. Two options will be visible. Read my meter and report leak. To submit a reading, choose Read My Meter. If your meter is unreadable, check this box and choose the reason why. If you are able to clearly see your meter dial, enter these numbers. Take a picture of the meter dial and click Submit. To report a leak, choose Report Leak. Enter in remarks, details such as street or specific location of the leak. Take a picture of the leak and click Submit. After you have submitted, you will see an alert saying your submission was successful. All across our nation, Guyana, we see it in your lives. The future growing even stronger. GPTI, all eyes on Guyana skies. As the voices of our people. Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs, electrical and household appliances, clothing, cell phones and accessories, and much, much more. Me got in this store, guys. Me Pio's Pizza Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit, no me know the secret. Like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody know the secret. <laughs> Here is what went down at the Dorshang Magistrates Court on Friday, January 5. A father and his son were on Friday placed before Magistrate Judy Latchman at the Georgetown Magistrate's Courts for the offense of unlawful wounding. Ishwar Chandrapal and his son Anishwar were jointly charged with the unlawful and malicious wounding of Dwayne Hetmeyer. The duo denied the charge. According to reports, the victim is the father of Ishwar's granddaughter. On the day in question, the man went to the Chandrapal's family home to pick up some clothing for the mother of his child since she was reportedly thrown out of the house. 
On his arrival, Hedmeyer was assaulted and attacked with a cutlass by the two defendants. The magistrate released the men on a $100,000 bail each and adjourned the matter until February 9. Two Campbellville Housing Scheme residents have been sentenced to 12 months in jail for stealing a refrigerator filled with beverages. Alex Bernard, 20, and Sion Adams, 19, were sentenced by Magistrate Judy Latchman after they confessed to the simple larceny charge. Particulars of the charge alleged that on January 2 at Seawall Road, Georgetown, the duo stole the refrigerator along with a quantity of beverages valued at $202,000. According to reports, the duo was caught red-handed with the items in the refrigerator. Meanwhile, a former employee of Munishwar's travel agency was on Friday charged with three counts of embezzlement. Priya Lal of South Romvelt, Georgetown, appeared before Magistrate Judy Latchman and was not required to plead to the indictable charges. Particulars of the first charge alleged that, on September 13, 2017, at Munishwar's travel agency, while being employed as a clerk or a servant at the agency, Lal fraudulently embezzled $158,000, which was taken into her possession on behalf of her employer. It is further alleged that between September 1 and September 30, she fraudulently embezzled $72,000 from Munishwar's travel agency. Lal was again charged with fraudulently embezzling $380,000 from the travel agency. She was not required to plead to the indictable offenses. Police prosecutor Gordon Mansfield opposed to the woman being released on bail. However, that was overruled by the magistrate, who granted Lal bail to the tune of $100,000 on each of the charges. The matter is adjourned until February 9. Finally, a 30-year-old farmer was on Friday released on $150,000 bail by Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan for the offense of trafficking cocaine. It is alleged that Ricardo Ramdu, on January 3 at the Potentia, West Bank de Marara, had 8 grams of cocaine in his possession for the purpose of trafficking. The farmer denied the charge, while his attorney, Lachmi Rahamat, made an application for bail. She claimed that multiple persons lived at the home where the drug was found. Police prosecutor Arvin Moore objected to Ramdu being released on bail on the ground of the seriousness of the charge. Moore, while disclosing short facts in court, explained the drugs were found in Ramdu's bedroom when police searched his potential home. Nevertheless, the magistrate released Ramdu on $150,000 bail and transferred the matter to the Wales Magistrates Court for January 31. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 754. Let's turn our attention to the Denver Harbor Bridge schedule. That's all we have for you in our newscast tonight, but before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. North of Penitent's family, homeless after fire ripped through their home. Police raids, hotel and strip club, 41 foreign nationals arrested. TNBA hands out six new radio licenses. Royston King unmoved by mounting calls for him to be fired. And in court, a father and son released on $200,000 bail for wounding their in-law. 
The newscast can be viewed online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be rebroadcasted later tonight at 23 hours and 6 hours 30 on Saturday, January 6. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I am Ashley Scott and thanking you for watching. Good night.